Hey guys, Billy here, and first of all, you're going to notice that my forehead is two different colors. That's why you never wear a bandana on a hot sunny day, which I also seem to do. And I never wear sunscreen because I can't stand the smell of it. Today, I'm going to be reading you a story about... <laughs> Sorry about that, little technical difficulties there with the camera. Alright, I have my book right here, I'm not going to tell you what it is, until I introduce you to two of my friends who will be watching me and listening to me and might add some feedback from Skype, what it's called, Skype, the phone call thing on internet. <clears throat> Alright, let me just bring them up on my keyboard here. Sheila! Thank you for joining us, Sheila. And as you can see, Sheila is going to be watching me as I read my childhood story. And I got one more friend. Tony! Hey, Tony. Alright. Guys, today's book is The Big Book of Serial Killers. This is my favorite book from my childhood. Um, I read it many times. I studied it. It's pretty interesting. Alright. So I spent the mo all morning trying to decide which tale I'm going to be reading from this book. And as you can see, I have something bookmarked. Alright. Today's story is Paul and Carla Homolka. Well, I guess technically it's Paul Bernardo. But they did get married, so... Paul Bernardo and Carla Homolka. Or as they're known in the States, they are the Barty murderers. Let's see what their culture. Hmm. It doesn't matter, but as you can see on the on the left side, that's what they look like. And they're the Barbie and Ken. Because I guess they're like kinda like perfect looking and stuff like that. Alright. <clears throat> Chapter one. I'm not going to read it like that, I'm just going to put this in my lap and you can look at my face. On the surface, Paul Bernardo and Carla Homolka appeared to have uh, everything going for them. They were both good looking and successful, and after meeting in 1987, fell completely in love with one another. Bernardo had just left the University of Toronto, hey I've been there a few times. Oh, shit, now I lost my place, I'm not going to add comments like that anymore. I just left the University of Toronto and was working as an accountant with Price Waterhouse and Homolka worked in a veterinarian clinic. In 1990, they got engaged, planning to get married the following year. Beneath this veneer and of beneath this veneer of respectability, a much darker picture would emerge. I gotta stop looking at the camera. I'm gonna keep my eyes on the words the whole time. A much darker picture would emerge of the relationship between what the media would call the canon Barbie of murder and mayhem. That's what they were called. Bernardo demanded perverted and sadistic sex from Homolka. <laughs> and treated her as a sex slave. That's funny. She compiled with all his demands, encouraged him to go further and further. But there was one thing she couldn't give up. She was not a virgin when they met and he wanted to take her virginity. Uh -oh. Trouble in paradise. Hmm. In November of 1990, Bernardo was interviewed by detectives investigating a series of rapes in Scarborough. That's near Toronto. Well, technically, it's part of Toronto. I should know that. The suburb of Toronto. Pfft, I really gotta. between May 1987 and May 1990. His name came up in the investigation a number of times and he fitted the composite picture drawn up of the Scarborough Rapist as the perpetrator, oh, as the perpetrator was being called. The detectives took her, oh, fuck, I can't talk. The, the, the detectives took her hair, or took hair, saliva, and blood samples from Bernardo and sent them for forensic testing and DNA profiling. It took more than two years for the results to come back. Ooh. There's a couple of pictures on this page. What does that say about that camera? 
Carla Homolka videotaped the assault and made sure she, or made sure her sister had regained consciousness. Consciousness. Mother. And there's another picture of Carla. Let's see what happens. Shortly after this police interview, Bernardo persuaded, persuaded Carla Homolka that as he had been able to take her virginity, the next best, oh, have. <clears throat> Shortly after the police interview, Bernardo persuaded, pers Homolka agreed, saying she would give Tammy Lynn Homolka, her sister. Let's skip that whole paragraph. In the new year, Bernardo and Homolka moved to a house in Port Deloise, near St. Catharines, on the other side of Lake Ontario from Toronto. Hmm, I don't think I've ever been there before. Bernardo was involved in a cigarette smuggling operation across the American border and gave up his job at Pricewaterhouse to concentrate on it. Over the next six months, a series of rapes occurred around St. Catharines. The police connected them to those committed by the Scarborough Rapist, but still didn't have the results of the test carried out on Bernardo. Late that night, on 15th of June, 1991, Bernardo was in Burlington, near Toronto, looking for a car license plate to steal. He wanted them to disguise his own car when he was driving across the border smuggling. What? <sighs> that night, 14-year-old Leslie Mahaffey got back late from a night out and her parents had accidentally locked her out. What the frick does that mean? She was standing outside her house when Bernardo saw her. He abducted Mahaffey and took her back to Port Deloise. Once there, Bernardo and Homolka repeatedly raped the young girl. The following day, they killed her and cut her, cut the body up for the power saw. Then they encased the body parts in concrete and dumped the blocks in Lake Gibson, not, not far from St. Catharines. This story is stupid. What do you guys think? Sheila? You?